I'm super stoked and super excited to bring out this amazing cast um, from the one of the <clears throat> most popular and greatest fantasy series of all time, Game of Thrones. Let's do it, everybody. Everyone's favorite squire. Please give it up for Podrick Payne. It's Daniel Portman. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hey Dan, what's up? Look at that! You got a rousing, rousing uh, applause from Natalia and Ron. Deafening, deafening! I could barely hear my, myself coming on stage there. <laughs> it's like a standing. <laughs> it was like a standing o of thousands of people just welcoming you to this virtual stage. Thank you so much for being here. Um, let's get everyone else out here. Um, what an important role! Um, these, this character, fantastically uh, defied gender roles in her people. Um, she was the first female to take charge in the Ironborn. And I think it's such a great message, such a powerful female character um, for all of, uh, all of the women out there to look up to. Yara Greyjoy herself. Let's hear it for Gemma Whelan. <laughs> Gemma, you did it. Entering's the hardest part. I did Entering. it, I pressed a button. <laughs> <laughs> I pressed, pressed the button and it worked. Thank God. <laughs> this is the hard, that's the part that people stress out stress out the most. But I'm a heart something. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, we saw her yesterday on the Harry Potter panel. We are excited to have her. Less than 24 hours, or maybe exactly 24 hours um, from yesterday. Back. Don't call her a wilding. All right, she is a free folk. Um, let's hear it for Osha Natalia Tena. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Natalia, Natalia, what I've loved about this is we had a rainy day yesterday. Now we have a beautiful day behind you. We're seeing That's all beautiful. of the uh, all of the weather. So thanks mm -hmm. for joining us once again. And what was yeah, your puppy's name again? I, I forgot your puppy's name from yesterday. Uh, mimosa, like the amazing uh, breakfast cocktail or the flower. <laughs> I forgot. Mimosa. Uh, all right. Next up, the master at arms at Winterfell and Winterfell and loyal servant to House Stark, Sir Roderick Castle himself. Please give it up for Ron Donahue. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. Yes. Hello, Ron. Hello, Ron. Welcome. Beautiful pictures behind you there. Is that your family? Uh, some of them are. Some of them are. Uh... I think they're autographs from people that I'd worked with for when the kids were younger. Oh uh, yeah, this this was a bedroom for for both our kids at one stage, and uh, yeah, I think we've got some some Doctor Who and some sort of middle range Star Wars stuff lying up there. Yeah, still waiting, I know. still waiting to be cleared away. I'm so excited to talk to all of this cast. All of you have spanned uh, multiple fantasy and sci-fi series uh, throughout your work. So very excited to have you. Obviously, we're going to talk Game of Thrones today, um, but love that we have all of you out here. Let's keep it going. Uh, actor and puppeteer known for portraying multiple um, White Walkers, uh, specifically many of the lieutenants uh, of the Night King himself on uh, Game of Thrones. Let's hear it for Ross Mullen. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes, you can't have a good hey. nerd panel. Can't have a good nerd panel without a Funko Pop, you know. <laughs> Ross, is that you? you? Know who I am? Yeah, that's your uh, lieutenant character. Nice, very good. Um, and last, but certainly not least, the Night King himself, stunt performer Vladimir Furdick. Yes! <laughs> Winter is coming. Actually, summer is coming. <laughs> <laughs> Summer, summer is here. I think summer is coming. I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. I'm going to change. You know, you know. So you never know. I'm going to change. Uh, okay. Go, whatever. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Vladimir, can you, Vladimir? I, I have a terrible flat American accent, and you said your name so much more beautifully than I could ever say. Can you please say it uh, with your own voice? Because it sounds so lovely. Uh, Vladimir Furdik. Oh my gosh! So much better. So much better. <laughs> oh. That is so awesome. Vladimir, where are you calling in from uh, right now? Where I am, are you in I am uh, in Italy, in Roma. Oh yes. Don't worry about it. It's very, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's very safe here. Pasta, pizza, you know. Eh. <laughs> well, it brings up, how do you, pasta or pizza, which do you pick? Which is your favorite in, in Italy? Uh, everything, I I love everything what is spicy, so pizza oh. uh, picante. Oh, pizza picante. Uh, oh, 
I'm getting jealous. I'm getting jealous just uh, hearing you. Let's check in with um, everybody. I'd love to hear just a little bit. Natalia, I know we checked in with you yesterday, Vlad. Uh, we, yes. we know you're calling in from Italy. Um, but I'd love just to hear a little bit about where you're calling in from. You know, how are you doing? What have you been doing? A big question that the fans uh, have been asking from uh, during these panels, just sort of what, how, how are you? And, and what have you been doing to pass the time? So I'd love to hear just a little bit from each one of you of, of how you're doing uh, and what you're doing to pass the time. Whoever wants to kick it off. Wants to go first. <laughs> That's you. That's you, Dan. That's oh, you, Dan. I've been I've been doing a lot of crack. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no crack. Um, no, no crack. No crack. No crack. Just uh, what everyone else has been, or I suppose, uh, just trying to stay positive and stay healthy. Trying to, you know, take it a day at a time and 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 use the time as productively as possible. Um, a lot of reading, a lot of exercise, a lot of walking, um, a lot of watching, and that's uh, that's that sort of sums up my lockdown in a, a, a sentence. Yeah. Two. So yeah, no crack, no crack, but just hope, hope. <laughs> <laughs> always hopeful, always hopeful. But um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. Gemma, how's your how's your uh, quarantining been going? Um, I've been doing a lot of play doh, a lot of <laughs> <laughs> painting, <laughs> potato painting, oh. uh, hand printing, because I have a two year old. I was gonna <laughs> say, <laughs> just me, <laughs> just <slowly> crazy, <laughs> just playing in a Wendy house by myself. <laughs> um, and I've been like Dan. I've been doing a lot of it. Well, I've been running most days and. Uh, trying to get some sleep and eat well and yeah having having a good enough time actually we're quite fortunate we've got a garden and um we've all well we, 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 my husband did have it but um we've all recovered quite well so yeah very nice very nice getting on well, with it much love to your daughter i know it's a very uh tricky time to be a parent but i think there's a lot of uh great connections happening between parents and children yeah. so congratulations she hasn't really noticed yeah, no, I don't know what that says. <laughs> that says you're a great mom. That just says you're ah, a great thanks. mom. Uh, awesome. Ron, how have, how have you been uh, these past couple of months? Yeah, I've been good. Uh, weather's been fantastic in Glasgow, which is very, very unusual. Uh, we have a big dog. So even in the, the height of the lockdown, we were allowed out, you know, to, to walk the dog. So uh, Glasgow is a very green city. There's a couple of very big uh, open spaces nearby. So out four times a day, walking, you know, five, six, eight miles a day, sometimes with a dog, uh, reading a lot. I think I've watched less television during the lockdown than at any other time in my life. Wow. I thought at the beginning, me, I'd be doing films, I'd be doing series, box sets, but actually it hasn't worked out that way. Uh, and I've loved the, the quiet of the city. I mean, I know it's been really difficult mm. for people in many respects, but sure. the, the absence of noise, the absence of traffic, uh, I've liked it. And, as it slowly seeps back, I, I, I kind of miss that aspect of it. That's a great point, Ron. It's, uh, there's so many things that we've discovered, I think, as a hu humans <laughs> uh, throughout this time that we are loving. And it's almost like feeling weird getting back into sort of the, the run of the mill, you know what I mean, kind of things. But yeah, less traffic, less noise, more calm, more connection, uh, for sure. Uh, and, and Ron, this is amazing. And, and I have to put you guys on the spot because I just learned this last night. I don't know why I never knew this, but I did not realize that Ron, you are the father of Dan, um, here on the call. Um, uh, are you in the same place? The other way around. It's the other way around. Dan, <laughs> you are Ron's father. Uh, what, that's so beautiful to share that uh, experience together in that series. Are you, have you been quarantined apart? Have you been able to see each other? Yeah. Yeah. We've, we've been able to see each other quite, a, quite a lot, which has that's been nice. Yeah. Great. We, uh, we're both in Glasgow at the moment, and it's meant that, uh, you know, we've been able, you know, especially when I go out with the dog and things, uh, we, you know, Dan walks in from the other part of the city that he's in, and uh, we meet in one of the big, one of the big parks, and uh, we, we walk along and we, we chat, and it's, it's, been, it's been really cool, actually. It's been good. So that's your childhood bedroom, Dan? Sorry? So that's your childhood bedroom? That's not my childhood bedroom, no. <laughs> um, Ron, not. if you're feeling, Ron, if you're feeling up to it and moving your computer, Maybe we can end with a little tour of uh, Dan's. Do that. Dan. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, in fairness, this wasn't really Dan's room. This was uh, this uh, was Dan's el elder sibling's room, particularly, uh, and they live in uh, they live in Washington now. And but we just really haven't got around to 
deconstructing it. I mean, we do it. <laughs> by, yeah, you can see little bits and pieces, and but uh, this was this was primarily uh, Nino's room rather than uh, rather than Dan's. Uh, Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being awesome. here. We appreciate it. And Ross, Ross, how about you? Uh, where are you calling in from and how have you, how have you been doing? Um, I am in Southeast London, probably nearest to Greenwich. I live in a place called Deptford and I've been very fortunate uh, doing a lot of walks. I live near Greenwich Park and Deptford Park and Southwark Park, uh, live near the river. So I've been walking a lot, getting a lot of exercise. Uh, I have caught up on things I've managed to never see in my life. Like I watched the Godfather trilogy. So oh. that was pretty awesome. Yeah. I can't believe I've never seen it. Um, I was watching Gemma on Killing Eve because that was <laughs> awesome. Very cool. Uh, yeah, just and drawing and writing a little bit, trying to stay creative and uh, not, you know, I'm just taking it in my stride. I'm, I'm actually enjoying it, um, but I'm ready to get back to work, I think, you know. Yeah. And Natalia, I know we talked to you yesterday, but there's a lot of folks that are watching that maybe weren't here yesterday. So tell us a little bit about uh, how you're doing. Uh, we learned yesterday that you have a boat house, a canal yes. boat house. Yeah, and I live on a boat. Um, I've, ha I've been really, really lucky. I mean, obviously loads of people have been you know, dealing with horrors during this, but I've yes. got a roof deck. And so I can actually be quite isolated because on the canal, it's so green. I'm, I'm in front of a cemetery and near, near a park. So I've got a lot of green around me. Um, like a lot of people, I've watched lots of shows. Um, Unorthodox is amazing on Netflix, by the way. Loved Great it. Thing. And Westworld, I got, I've done a lot of podcasts. Weirdly, people are ranked, I was like, I'm not going to work the next you know, year. And actually, I've had a few podcasts I've done. Uh, like I said yesterday, I've, I've learned to make sourdough. <laughs> amazing. Uh, <laughs> takes a lot of time to get that start of going. Yeah. You see, yeah, cooking, a lot of baking, cooking, drinking, seeing friends when I can at a distance in a park with a dog, hugging my dog a lot. Oh, Pretty much it. Awesome. Yeah. Amazing. Well, again, thank you all for being here. We know um, people are going through various things uh, throughout the world. And what the best part of this uh, and these panels have been, have been you all just giving us a nice little break, celebrating the the series that we we knew and loved. So, so again, thank you all. Th what's been amazing about uh, Game of Thrones so far is we had a, pr a previous call with six or seven of, of your other uh, co-stars and co-actors. And I think that's what is so amazing about Game of Thrones is that extensive list of characters and just all of you coming in and, and bringing your own uh, little nuance um, to everything uh, that you did. And, you know, and we could, we could have 10 of these panels and still maybe not even tap out the amount of amazing performances, amazing uh, characters out there. I just want to kick things off uh, just by asking, and a lot of fans are, are asking this, and then we'll get to some more specific questions. What was it like uh, your first time on this set coming into Game of Thrones, whether you knew about the fantasy series or the book series before or not, uh, I'd just love to hear about your sort of first days uh, on set uh, and some of those first memories uh, and some of those first early favorite scenes that you had uh, on this show. Who is the first? <laughs> I can start. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, go for uh, it. Yeah, go. <laughs> yeah, for me, for me, uh, Game of Thrones was one of the uh, uh, movie what I'm doing in my life. So for me, I never heard nothing about Game of Thrones. I never read the uh, book. I don't know nothing. I just somebody <laughs> called me, hey, Vlad, do you want to be part of the Game of Thrones? I say yes, why not? So it just <laughs> you no, know, you know. Then I step in the in the process, and then I realize how how is the big the show. So this was my first experience with. But I step in the in the show as a stuntman. Who became the actors? Like is uh, you know they offer me uh, actually they offer me first uh, uh, to be vibe walker. I was the ex vibe walker in season five uh, when okay. where, where uh, Jon Snow killed first vibe walker was me Ross yeah remember <laughs> <laughs> so, and anyway so uh, and then later on. Uh, uh, the production offered me to be to have a part of the to be night king but uh actually uh, how i said before uh, i never know never heard nothing about the game of thrones actually i did preparation for season four so se uh, season three but i help my friends i don't really uh okay. don't try to find yeah what is this show just some my friend told me can you help me with the fight and i just come to him and help him in the Belfast. Cool. my story 
Nice. So you actually um, did some advising on other stunt performers, other uh, yeah. stunt. Yes, exactly. It's like, uh, you know, uh, it's the job. Somebody offers you a job and uh, you take it. So then later on, you sometimes is the big name. Uh, if if it's Ridley Scott, I already know Ridley Scott, but uh, actually uh, for Game of Thrones, uh, I think season, season one, season two, the Game of Thrones grow up every season. So yeah. this wasn't like uh, like uh, straight. Uh, they grow up like flowers, you know. <laughs> How, so and then and then became be one of the nice big flowers. So what I would like to say. So, so I think uh, when I did uh, when I helped with the season three, it still was like a little bit uh, less people watching, and every season was bigger and bigger. Yeah. yeah. That's a beautiful, that's a beautiful metaphor. Yeah, you came in when the flowers were like just blooming and it was beautiful and you just came right in. Yeah, I, I just fly, I just fly there, you know. And then <laughs> I, I just take the honey, this honey from the, from the flowers and go home. <laughs> this is good. We're getting very specific with this analogy. I like it, I like it. You're the bee that came in to pollinate the flowers. Very nice, very nice. Um, anyone else, first, first experiences on set or early memories uh, joining the series? So like I mean, if we're, if we're going to do flower metaphors, uh, yeah. I, start, I started on the pilot, which yes. has never been, never been broadcast. Uh, and we started filming in Scotland. There, were, there was a week's filming in Scotland, the only filming that was ever done here. Uh, and then we moved over to, to Belfast to the, to the main unit. But a, a pilot's a very, a very specific feeling because, you know, everybody's, everybody's desperately keen to, to get the thing to, to go to series. Sure. Uh, and unlike in in later years when you have two casts or or two units or everything being split into you know second units, first units, whatever, everybody's always on set together at the same time, and it, everything has a very specific sense of purpose. Uh, and even in those very early days, I think people had very high hopes of it. And after we shot very little material, people felt that it was it, you know potentially going to be a success. But nobody could ever have imagined, you know, what a, a huge success it, it, it turned out to be. But in those early days, it was very exciting. Single cast, everybody, you know, living out of everybody else's pockets, all in the same hotel, and it was, uh, it was just a just a terrific time. Uh, and then when it went to series, my my first three days filming were the the ambush in either episode five or episode six of series wow. one. Yeah, and uh, we you know we'd spent a couple of weeks rehearsing the fight because it's a hugely hugely complicated fight. Uh, and I thought I was doing pretty well with the fight until we realized that having rehearsed the entire thing on the flat, we were doing it on this precipitous slope where it had been you know, raining for the last 10 days. So rather than uh, working out in your shoes in a nice flat hotel room, all of a sudden we were, we were rocks and uh, grass and mud everywhere. And oh it, was, it was fantastic. It was stupid. The whole thing was a, just a great experience. It's cool. Yeah. And a, and a fan favorite character, certainly early on uh, when we were spending times in Winterfell. So thanks, Ron. That was a lot of fun. Um, Dan, I think you started to talk. Yeah. What, what were you yeah. Saying? Um, well, I mean, I, I was I was 19 when I got the job. So it, it was uh, it was all very. Um, I mean, I'd done I'd done some TV and I'd done a couple of films in Scotland before, but nothing to the same scale. So it, it was all uh, it was all a bit intimidating. Um the first, I think my first day, I, I, I don't even think my face was shot on the first day. <laughs> they, they, were, they were trying to trying to sort of hide me as a sort of, because I came into season two and then the sort of big role I had in season two was saving, uh, saving Tyrion's life at the, the Battle of Blackwater. So I think they kind of wanted to slide me in uh, inconspicuously to just sort of, make that as much of a surprise to people who hadn't read the book uh, uh, as possible. Um, so yeah, I had a couple of days where not much happened and then I was, I was thrown onto, onto this battlefield and, and, and it was, um, I just sort of felt like I was in, in, in dreamland and, yeah. and obviously what we, we touched on before, obviously Ron being my old man, um, it was, it was good that we were sort of crossing over. My journey on the show was starting just, uh, as as his was finishing, so there was one evening where we did uh, we did manage to go out and have a, a beer or two uh, together in Belfast as a sort of changing changing of the guard, which was uh, 
it was just a lovely, lovely chance for us to to both do that because we've never worked on anything uh, together before that, and, and we haven't had the chance to do it since. So, so it was a a nice opportunity to just sort of have a have a laugh at how uh, how 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 weird the world is and, and what a what a nice coincidence it had turned out to be. But yeah, it was intimidating, but um, very exciting to be thrown into something that was. Uh, Sort of, I think by the time season two, that tail end of season two came around, they were really throwing a lot of money into it at that stage already. And mm. you yeah. can see the scale was, was getting bigger with, with the sets they built in Black, uh, for Blackwater. And there was a real buzz on set about how people were going to react to, to that whole sequence with the wildfire. So it, it was, it was uh, yeah, it was pretty special. Very nice. What a beautiful story with, uh, with your father. That's awesome. Gemma, first scenes, obviously coming in strong uh, within a, in a new place, you know, that hadn't been introduced yet on the show. Uh, I'd love to hear sort of about those early days uh, as an Ironborn. <laughs> yeah, and um, well, we shot, um, I joined in season two and I'd never read the books and I'd never heard of the show, um, but was sort of furiously studied what I could and watched what I could before my audition. And then once it was all, you know, agreed that I, I was uh, to be Yara, and I arrived on set, we were shooting out of sequence. So we shot episode eight of season two first. And um, so I shot my last scene first, which, uh, you know, when Yara's just full of, uh, you know, she's at Winterfell, she's got her feet up on the table. She's saying, you know, you think you, so, you know, the, as um, Theon returns. And uh, so I had to have a lot of swagger and bravado from the get go and really sort of own the space and the scene and own Alfie. And I was shitting myself or <laughs> if I'm allowed to swear, I don't know, but I was just so nervous on my first day. And um, I've told this story before, but for anyone who, who's willing to listen again, I, Yara's meant to be, is it, it says in the stage directions, she's sort of chewing on meat bones. And I hadn't told them I don't eat meat. And they pre- prepared this kind of fat. Look at Natalia, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Um, I had a day off from being a vegetarian, basically, because I was too frightened to let them know. Oh, my um, God. That I was, and my mouth was, he, I did say to him, listen, is there any alternative? He said, I've got bread. But that it just made my throat really dry because I was already so nervous. So I just ate chicken. <laughs> Um, I think I grew a couple of inches overnight, but um, it, was a, <laughs> it was a pretty, it was a pretty big protein hit. Um, and oh. uh, yeah, I was, you know, so uh, as the others have said, it, it felt like something different, like something very special was happening. I'd done, uh, you know, smaller things before that, not to be, um, not to undermine them, but this really felt like something quite um, special. And I, and I, you know, you want to honor and step up to the level. And so, yeah my way of doing that was eating chicken and really losing all my morals. Right. Fine. Right. Natalia looks, Natalia looks physically grossed out. I know Natalia's going to puke no, up. No, no, I'm, I'm a meat. I mean, I'm a proper red blooded uh, meat eater, but oh, that must just be so awful. Just that first thing on set, I can imagine just that like, you have to, you just, just got to do it. Yeah, like, I, can't do it. I, do. I can't, I can't let you know that I, if, if, you know, oh. I can't ask to get the corn sausages out. Can I? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god Natalia what, uh, what about you first days um, with, with Game of Thrones up in, up in the north uh, I was so I was in Belfast and I, I think if I remember correctly it was the day that I kind of ambush Bran and oh, little Isaac was so little then and he was on this horse and I have to batter uh, uh, um, Rob Stark so Richard and we 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 had we I think we only did the fighting the day before or that morning, and I got so into it. I, I really bashed him. I really smacked him hard. I felt really bad. Obviously, you carry, I have to carry on filming, but I knew that I'd, I'd hit him. So I already was like, "What have I done? Oh God!" And I was I, the thing is, I was there in season one, so we had no real idea like how big it was going to be um, at all yet. Uh, but I don't know. It, it <laughs> for me that first day was just me. Um, damaging another actor and trying to deal with a horse that wouldn't stay still. Like I was grabbing this horse and the horses are amazing. Animal, they say never work with animals and children. I don't think that's true, but I do think that animals, um, I don't know if kids are the same, but animals basically had a shelf life of the day. They're like, they're really great at four in the morning, but by 4 PM they're like, absolutely not. I'm going to bed. 
no, yeah. no. And it was but at this point it was 6 p.m. and this horse was, it was trying to fight me. But I was like, well, I'm going to be this white. Again, a bit like you, I'm like, I can't be scared because it's my, my first day. So I'm just going to deal with this horse. Um, so yeah, it was again, a bit like you're very scary, a bit scary um, dealing with uh, all of that. But it was good. And actually, it was one of the few days that it wasn't raining or cold in Belfast and I was in a forest. So I was very beautiful. <laughs> uh, awesome. Ross, uh, similar to Vladimir, I assume um, you played uh, played multiple parts throughout the series. What was what was the first one that uh, that the first character you got to portray? Uh, well, I came in at the end of season two for the season finale. I played that uh, White Walker, and um, I also had never heard of Game of Thrones. I called it King of Thrones when I went to my audition. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I continued to call it King of Thrones throughout, I think, uh, until I was really working on it. Um, you know, once I started, they sent me out for horseback riding lessons. So I learned lots of how to ride a horse, riding it bareback and all that. Once we got to the shoot day, we were actually shooting everything on green screen in a green screen studio at Shepperton. So it was actually boiling hot and they didn't need me to actually ride very much. They needed me to keep the horse actually quite still or just walk a couple of space, you know, a couple of steps. So it was actually more challenging than riding because getting a horse to stand still, move to the right, move to the left, it was more like trick. Uh, but it was boiling, boiling hot. Also, I remember because the cast had never seen or none of the crew had seen anything of the White Walker before, Dan and David kind of kept it secret. So when I first arrived on set, what they did was they brought the horse over to my makeup trailer and then I got on the horse and they rode it over to the set and they kind of kicked the doors open and I rode in on the White Walker and everybody was going, oh my God. <laughs> and of course they all took out their phones to take a picture and they were like, no, 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 don't. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I was like, here I am for King of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do right. it. The, most, <laughs> yeah, the moment everyone was waiting for, uh, yeah, the, the reveal of the White Walker. Moment, son. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, um, and uh, shout out to all the fans out there. A lot of fans are asking kind of similar questions about like favorite scenes, favorite moments. I'm a, uh, specifically Beach 360. And then also uh, Katie uh, 15X. Uh, we're, Katie 15X was asking about the stunts. Um, and I know Vladimir and Ross, uh, you can talk about that. And, and really everyone is, was involved in some sort of stunt work, whether it was riding a horse or, you know, wielding a sword. Um, tell us about your favorite. Uh, and then uh, Beach 360 was act, asking more specifically about makeup. Um, but I'd love to hear just about any stunt moments that stand out to you, uh, whether it was, you know, a, a battle scene or a horse ride or anything like that. Anything from anyone that is a particularly memorable action moment? Um, I mean, yeah. Vladimir uh, did quite yeah. a lot of work with me and a lot of other people in the last season because we were doing this gigantic uh, Battle of Winterfell. Um, yes. Which, which, I mean, it, it looked chaotic, but it was orchestrated chaos. I, I, I mean, it, it was a re remarkably put together. But, I mean, that whole experience, I think, for me was just, I've never seen anything like it, and I don't know if I ever will see anything like that on a film mm -hmm. set. And just the, the scale of how many supporting artists there were, how many cast were there in, in, in the, the one place, how many stunt men and women were there. Um, it, 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 was, it was crazy. And, and, you know, along with the natural elements of uh, Northern Ireland in January and February at night, you know, so it wasn't pleasant. It was cold and you had fog machines, smoke machines, you had snow everywhere. Sometimes it was real snow, sometimes it was fake snow. Wow. Um, and yeah, I mean, certainly I wish that I had got myself in better shape before. <laughs> <laughs> I was not in the best shape at the time, and I really was struggling. Um, but Vladimir, <laughs> Vlad, uh, yeah, it was just to big up Vladimir and, 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 uh, and Rowley and, and the, the, the team of stunties who, who managed to sort of pull the strings on what, I mean, on paper, must have looked like an impossible task, um, which then turned into this sort of, uh, you know, 
in, incredible TV moment. So uh, yeah, that was my that was my big stunt moment that I, that will always stick out for me was you know two months in the dark in Northern Ireland swinging a sword like <laughs> like a mad man. Gosh, and and shout out to all the directors and the stunt choreographers and stunt performers. Yeah. I mean, th- that was the those battles throughout the series. You know, obviously the battle of Winterfell at the end, but throughout the series, uh, yeah. the uh, the red uh, keep uh, battle there too. My gosh, amazing, Vladimir. Do you have any reflections on that? Was there a particular battle or stunt moment that sticks out to you? I think first of all, I would like to say we were so lucky because we had very good production that give us the time to make the good preparation. And also, right. we spoke, we spent long time with Dan, uh, long time with Gemma on the gym. She can remember every move, every move specifically <laughs> what we did in the movie. And we were so lucky because for the production, they give us the time and they know uh, because the best preparation and you have a nice, uh, easy job on the set. For me, for me, uh, one of the stunts, what I did, uh, I think uh, jumped from, I don't know, from 12 or maybe 13, 15 meters, I don't remember, Full of the oh. fire in the boxes. This was for me one of the <laughs> crazy moment. And one I remember uh, when Night King died, no die, when he fell from the dragon, this <laughs> shot. We did maybe I don't know, maybe 18 times into the boxes. And I really scared because he, he, I go first, first, second, third. They said they have a money, uh, they have a like budget for four times, and I did maybe eighteen times. I said, "Come on, <laughs> boys, I'm so tired." So eighteen times from from the from the tower, ten meters <laughs> into the boxes without the move. You you you, you should go just oh <laughs> from the dragon. And they don't want they don't want nothing. You can see every time when they falling and. From high, 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 uh, from a high, uh, how to say elevation? The, yeah, yeah, high, yeah. High jump, they always they moving, but they said no. You should you're falling from the dragon. Like, oh, like oh. This. yes, this was one of my one of my uh, not easy job. Wow, that's a <laughs> lot of a lot of extra boxes, a lot of boxes wasted. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, glad, uh, Gemma, uh, he referenced you. First of all, Ophia921 loves your sweater and wants to know where they can get your sweater, Gemma. <laughs> <laughs> Madeline <Yeah>. Thompson. <laughs> there we go. Lovely sweater. Um, but yeah, Gemma, you were involved in a lot of action scenes as well. Um, one particularly stuck out to you? Um, jumping off the ship onto boxes, like Vlad, like jumping onto boxes is always fun and always really difficult. Like I, I, I kept, I was supposed to look really, really tough and I kept doing all my little ballet moves from when I was young, like doing little pointy toes. But um, I, I, we went past the budget and boxes for my jumps as well. Um, <laughs> uh, but the, going back to, was it episode, series three or four when I try and rescue Theon and the scene in, in, this, the, in the dog kennels and Ramsay comes in and, and prevents oh. the rescue. But obviously, going back to what Ron was saying, you know, you rehearse in, in a very, very comfortable environment where, where you know, half time. And they say, you know, there'll be some dogs, and there'll be some stunties, but, you know, and then we got in there. It was so cramped. And also what Nat was saying that I hadn't been taught that when you hit someone, uh, you got to pull. And I was just whacking people. <laughs> <laughs> so... So we were really crammed in. I was I was injuring a lot of people, and then they brought the dogs in, and they said, "You must not make eye, con- eye contact with the dogs because that is their cue to attack." So of course you want to test it out, but I, it's like saying, "Don't think of an elephant." Um, but anyway, it, that was a very cramped, very inexperienced moment for me in the middle of the night. Um, but again, like enormous fun that, that, you know, we, we got some, some great shots and then working with Iwan was incredible um, as Ramsey. So, but that was a really memorable time because it was actually one of the only night shoots I did. I was, I was quite lucky in that I spent most of my time um, in daylight hours on the, on the show, but um, that was a, a fun and less talked about um, scene. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a tragic, a tragic uh, moment for your character, obviously. Um, Ross, I, I, we kind of went around about stunts, and obviously you're involved in stunts as well. But again, Beach uh, 360, we talked about the makeup. And I know the, the White Workers were a combination of makeup and, um, and some CGI-like effects. Uh, but I'd love to hear a little bit about the makeup process and how long it took and 
who the, the specific question was who spent the longest time in makeup? <laughs> I, I don't know how long Vlad did, but I spent about five hours in makeup to six wow. hours sometimes in the beginning. Um, you know, you started like one o'clock in the morning, five hours in makeup. And then you're ready to shoot at around six. That's for, you know, a day shoot. And then you'd shoot for about 12, 12 hours, maybe, you know, and then you're, it takes about almost two hours to get out of it properly, I suppose. And then you head back to the hotel and have a glass of wine and a little cry and then <laughs> <laughs> go back <laughs> in. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, it's actually, I mean, for myself, I think, and also for Vlad, it, uh, it was very little CGI. I think with the exception yeah. of the eyes, it's mostly CGI and the steam that's coming off my body, really. Wow. Wow. But, but so the cool. eyes, you had the lenses as well. Yes, black, black lenses. Yeah. Uh, initially, in the first season, they wanted, well, season two, they gave me these contacts that actually the, the eyes looked a lot like the skin. It was like all craggy and uh, wrinkled, but it didn't, it didn't actually show on camera. So they superimposed blue. Then the following seasons, I was wearing black lenses. Uh, they just found that was easier, but I hated wearing them. It's not easy to kind of always see, especially if you're riding or something like that. Yeah. One of the one of the worst for me was the nails. Oh yeah, they just keep because falling and bending. You and... Go with the nails, the top, and all have a lunge or break, you know. So the, it's not easy to 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 uh, go to the toilet. Yeah, go to the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> that's what that's what this international. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my nails kept falling off. You know, yeah. when you were riding, I'm holding onto the chain of the horse. And the nails kept falling off. I'd be like, I have to stop. My nails like falling off. <laughs> so, so the one of the scariest characters in all of fantasy comes yeah. riding in, complaining about their nails yeah. and saying it's called King of Thrones. No. <laughs> and I was it's, like digging through the fake snow trying to find my nails, going, I think it's over here. I think I saw it here. Oh my gosh, so cool. Did you get to keep any of the nails, any of the prosthetics? <laughs> I actually kept my ears for a really long time. I wrapped them up in, um, I wrapped them up in uh, you know, cling film and uh, put them in my washing bag. And then they ended up somehow out of the washing bag and in my medicine cabinet. And then my flatmate found them and he was like, what is this? It's like so disgusting. <laughs> I was like, oh, those are my ears from Game of Thrones. He's like, yeah, we're throwing those in the garbage. Like we're not keeping them. Oh my gosh. Well, obviously, uh, as a as a fan of the book uh, previously, and I know a lot of fans were coming into the TV show, there was such a buildup in our in our imaginations of what these white workers, w walkers and the others could look like. And just shout out to the production team for the design. I thought they looked amazing. And then shout out to you both for bringing them to life. You know, I thought uh, it really was an ominous presence and such a cool creative look. So again, thanks Vladimir and Ross for bringing those characters to life. Um, speaking of characters and let's get, uh, we'll start with Ron and uh, Natalia. Uh, there is a, a ton of questions in various forms. Um, I'm gonna just shout out some names. Venerable Ireland Yard, uh, also Kelsey Watson Delft, uh, Megan Mullins, uh, who else is asking something similar? Uh, Eve, uh, Eve Lienz, anyway. Um, oh, Ariel, uh, Shooting Star King. They all, they are all very curious. Obviously we've been a year now uh, removed from, from the show and, and I know I'm missing it. And I just wonder, the, the question is, you know, what did you think of your characters? There's a lot of ends in Game of Thrones, right? The joke is that everybody dies, right? And I wonder, yeah. uh, is there anything that you would have changed or what was your fa either favorite story arc or anything you would have changed about your character uh, if you could go back? Um, I know. Lady I would kill Euron. Yes. That yes. was my job. I would have done, ex yeah. I, my character would have been able to kill him or at least scar him. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm there, I'm so close to slitting his throat and just something, just some mark on his body would have been nice. Still um, Euron? Yeah, like you and like, yeah, the, the Ramsey, you know, he, he killed oh, me. And it, it, um, it was, <laughs> I really didn't want to die. I really wanted to come back because I came back in season six and I, I was so excited. I was like, yes. And then I get this call and it's like, yeah, you're in only for two weeks. And I was like, uh, what? And then they told me I was working with, with Yuan, who I'd actually worked with on something else. And in that, he'd be my boyfriend. So we'd already done this like quite intense sex scene. And then I did this and we had this death scene. I was like, we've done it all now. We've done this whole stuff <laughs> in life. Um, but it was, it was quite scary. It was quite scary doing it because it was so 
technical. Um, and I, I, I would have loved to survive just till the end, just to the end of the season, you know? She could have been that battle. I been forgot great. that. I forgot that Ramsey killed both of you. That's yeah. I thought you said yeah. you're on, like you're on Greyjoy. I first. know. No, I said you're on. Oh, you oh, did say you're on. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I you said you on. Sorry. No, no, it's yeah. fine. Well, both, yeah, both of those annoying, annoying men in your way. We should have killed them both. I agree with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> let you all, let you all take on. All right, cool. Um, any anything else from uh, the rest of the cast? Things you would have changed, or, or or parts that you really enjoyed about your character? Well, I loved my death. I really enjoyed my death scene, however sad yeah. it was. I, I just wish it had happened in season eight rather than the end of season two. It would have been. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, I probably would have pulled the trigger on. Uh, on wee Poddy being a, a decent uh, horse rider and a decent swordsman earlier than halfway through the final season. Sure. I would have pulled the trigger on that maybe. Yeah. Because he spent a long time. Spent a long time as a squire, you know? <laughs> it didn't say much about Brienne's teaching. Um, <laughs> it took her, you know, four and a half, five seasons for, for me to be able to hold a sword with the right end. Anyway. <laughs> Not you got that. to be a knight's guard. You got to be a knight's guard at the end. Not the worst. Uh, not, no, no, not the worst. Not the worst ending. Not the worst ending at all. Yeah, compared to the other characters. Um, Ross, Vladimir, any any sort of reflections on the on the um, White Walkers and sort of their their. Uh, you know, ending? like when I got killed by Sam in season three, uh, I didn't find out until I went into rehearsal, and Michelle McLaren said, "Okay, so you come down off the, over the hill." Uh, and then you turn your back and then, you know, Sam puts the dragon glass in your back and you die. And I went, oh, okay. And she went, you didn't know that? Oh, no. Like, I can't believe I'm <laughs> telling an actor they've lost their job. And I said, don't worry, I'll be back as another White Walker next year. But, <laughs> so, you know, uh, I wouldn't really change anything. It's a, such a great story. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, it was, it was great. It was a great journey. Yeah, that's awesome. Vlad, how about your death scene? What did you think uh, about your I, I I never die, so this was my dreams. <laughs> that's that, that's true. You can come back. I, you can come back. <laughs> I come back. This is secret. Don't tell anybody. But <laughs> <laughs> nice. Spoiler alert. Spoiler that there was you know, a, a fantasy scene. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. It's all magical. Anybody can come back at the end of the day, right? If John if John Snow can wake up, I can do it. No, worry. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. If John you Snow can, can come back. You can put the snow together and eyes and then <laughs> <laughs> it's like snow. The Christmas show. Yeah. <laughs> what if the Night King was like, yeah, Frosty the Snowman, and all you had to do was like wish hard enough and then you <laughs> got that. Frozen four. Yeah, frozen four. Yeah, there we go. We all the elements. Thrones Christmas special. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't make that mistake. Yeah, don't don't do that. <laughs> um, we're we're about out of time. I just want to remind the fans. This has been so lovely. I just want to remind the uh, remind the fans watching uh, that if you had a specific question for one of our individual actors, that's what those one on one video chats are for. So if you're able, um, head to Wizard World Virtual and purchase those. They're going to happen immediately following the panel once we give our actors a break, and then. Um, will be on sale throughout the week, in addition to autographs and video recorded messages for those that are participating. All right, there's a lot of questions out there. Uh, we're gonna do kind of like a rapid fire uh, fin uh, finale thing. If you could, favorite, char favorite character besides yourself, if you could play any other character, this is from Evelyn's and then also Jolie Van Sand. Favorite character besides uh, yourself? Theon. Theon. Thirsty. Thirsty. Nice. Thirsty. Good one. Davos. Davos. Oh, Tyrion. Yeah, yeah, good, good, yeah. We'll call it like, <laughs> <laughs> Yay. You're with one. <laughs> Vlad, favorite favorite character from Game of Thrones? Uh I love everybody. I like <laughs> good answer. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> if I can be part of the any any uh character, I will be so uh, lucky and happy. Oh, oh, Wait, I've changed mine. Brianne, sorry, sorry. There you go. My my brain woke up. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, everyone with, with all these shows that are super tight in terms of the amount of things that you're allowed to steal, <laughs> and, but really cool stuff that you could steal. Everyone always wants to know if you took anything from set, specifically Kathy Green. Did anyone? Oh, Natalia, you look ashamed. No, did it's you, just. Did you see what I was wearing? I, I was basically wearing just like some mess. I had nothing that I'd want to. I was actually wearing like rat tails and there was nothing to steal that's a good point you didn't have the best costume no offense <laughs> no i loved it It was the comfiest thing so for me it was great but don't really want it in my house 
Anyone else? Any mementos from set? In my ears, and they're in the garbage now. They're somewhere. <laughs> my boots. Oh. oh. You got your boots? <laughs> they're upstairs. Oh, oh yes. Oh, man. I did, I, get some, I, I did get some sort of quiet permission. I said, I said, if, if, if these weren't here when you came back, <laughs> how, what would, how would that be? <laughs> you know, about? You'd have done that. Amazing. <laughs> I think they had doubles. There was doubles. There were doubles. Why didn't I do that? <laughs> Barbara, did, were you about to say you were going to take something? Or you took something? Uh... I have a mask, original mask one from the day when uh, she killed me. Oh. Uh, because the mask was very fragile. The mask, every time they uh, destroyed the throat of the trash, because it was really uh, not easy to put off from the face. So I asked the makeup if they, we can, uh, I can take the, the mask home. So they, they cut the mask uh, in the middle back and they slowly they spend like maybe one hour, maybe longer to take the mask off so I have my original mask home. Oh. This, it's one of the, I think this is just one on the world. I mean, original. <laughs> you have the, Orig you have the Night King's face on your wall. <laughs> That's amazing, amazing. <laughs> Kathy Green uh, asked that question as well. In addition to Paul Varga, last but not least, it's a song of ice and fire. Uh, people want to know our blazing, which, which dragon do you pick ice or fire? Cooler dragon, ice or fire? Ice. 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 Oh, fire. Nice. fire? Fire, fire. Dan, I think you're the deciding vote. Did you pick one? The ice. Ice. Yeah, ice wins. Ice over fire. Wow. All right. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Um, all right. Thank you so much. Uh, this has been uh, such a treat. We could talk about Game of Thrones for hours and hours on end, but we only have 40, 45 minutes. So we got to get you a break. We got to get you to your uh, next one-on-one uh, -on -one video chats. Um, thank you so much. Uh, Game of Thrones, again, one of my favorite series. I know it's a lot of fans out there, favorite fantasy series of all time. Um, the parts that you all played were, were so beautifully done. So we thank you on behalf of all the fans for being here, talking about it, get, portraying your characters. And uh, we love you for it. And I know uh, it's going to continue on. You know, we're going to go back and Game of Thrones is going to be that thing that we watch with our kids and, and rewatch with our kids and everything like that. So um, again, thank you for being a part of that. Good luck uh, with the rest of your careers. Once we get back to a time of filming. <laughs> uh, yeah, it'd be great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're excited to see what is coming next from you. Um, uh, so one more time, uh, Wizard World Virtual Experience fans watching out there, let's get a big round of emojis uh, to this amazing cast. Uh, one more time, let's hear it for Daniel Portman, Gemma Ooh. Whelan, Natalia Tenna, Ron Donahue, Ross Mullen, and Vladimir Furdick. I, I yes. bet you. <laughs> Hi, guys. See you guys. Hey, guys. hey, this is Alex Malari Jr., and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Your emperor commands it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>